Hello guys and welcome back to the tutorial on MapReduce. So in the previous lectures we have been discussing about Mapper, Reducer, how is the record, work, record reader working, what are the various inputs, split formats, the partitioner and sorting in Hadoop. So in case you guys have missed any of these tutorials you can you can go back and have a look at them and come back to this tutorial for a better understanding. So, what are combiners? So, what essentially is a combiner? So, we have been discussing about the MapReduce applications which are limited by the bandwidth available on the cluster. We also talked about the different bandwidth on different racks. So, the racks which are placed on closer node like node 1 and node 2 those racks will be easily accessible and will have a higher bandwidth as compared to the other racks or racks which are far away from each other will have a lower bandwidth available so it pays off to minimize the data shuffle between map reduce task so Hadoop allows users to specify combiner functions just like reduce functions to be able to run on map outputs so like combiner, it's combining different outputs. It's like reduced task. So supposedly we are having a rack R. So in our rack R, we are having these nodes. Node 1 and say node 2. In our R2 or rack number 2, there is again node 1 and node 2. So firstly, we run a map task. So our map task just map the number of map power data with a serial number say one every one like uh, okay we are counting the number of apples in our fruit basket using a map reduce task so map map task defined apple one orange one apple one orange one like uh, then we can say pineapple one and everything so so we mapped our tasks so what will combiner do? It it will reduce it. So as we can see over here, the map output. So what essentially our combiner is doing, as we can see over here, after doing our map task. So we came over here on Y and T. So T is the number of value we are having. So why is say year? So what did combiner do over here? I would like you guys to take a look and have a guess. So combiner is combining my output. So it's combining all of these outputs and giving me the number 20, which is the highest number over here. So combiner acts like a reduced task it pays off the data to minimize the data be being shuffled between map and reduce tests to avoid any complications or intermingling of between data and the data getting tangled combiner just combines them together that's the work of a combiner so now coming to task and job scheduling as we have been discussing since the first very first tutorial the task scheduling in MapReduce is a great feature. So you can schedule your task and each task is, again, happens in isolation depending on upon the other tasks. So each task is a separate task. It happens in isolation, irrespective of the next, next task. So MapReduce adopts a master and slave architecture that's the key point the master node is referred to as job tracker so it's tracking the number of jobs that are being scheduled in our cluster each slave node is known as task tracker so there's a slave node and there's a master node master node is my job tracker while the slave node is my task tracker so firstly we are scheduling jobs and jobs within jobs we are having tasks tasks see it in this manner task tracker being a subset of my job tracker within my job there will be a task like in a company we are having a job 
in a company we are having a job and in the jo that job we are having different tasks so that is what essentially task scheduling means in Hadoop so MapReduce adopts a pull based scheduling strategy rather than a push based one so that is job tracker that does not push map and reduce tasks to task tracker but rather task trackers pulls them by pertaining requests so it's the task tracker that is scheduling that is pulling them by making pertaining requests it's not the job tracker that that pushes map map and reduce task to task tracker rather it's the task tracker so like like we were discussing in a company it's it's the tasks that require a person to be able to do it correct so even if that does not make any sense that gives us some point of correlation to be able to develop certain understanding of how MapReduce is working so as we can see so firstly there's a task tracker requesting certain request from a job tracker and then job tracker giving a reply then again it requested task tracker requested the job tracker for some requests and the, the job tracker gave a reply and T1 came over here so every task tracker sends a heartbeat message periodically to a job tracker encompassing a request for a map or a reduced task that this function needs to be performed so map task scheduling so job tracker what it actually does is it, it satisfies a request for map task by attempting to schedule map task in in immensity of their input splits so that is that basically means that we are trying to exploit data locality so once again job tracker is trying to satisfy the requests so let us come back over here so job tracker is trying to satisfy the requests so it's giving a reply to them or a heartbeat the same way like we see over here so job tracker satisfies request for a map task by attempting to schedule map task in vacancy of their input splits we are trying to exploit data locality so then we come to reduce task scheduling so however job tracker simply assigns the next yet to run reduced task to a requesting task tracker of a task tracker network location and its amplified effect on reduced shuffle time so map th this map task is trying to exploit data locality while the reduced task cannot exploit data locality it has to combine them like like you were just, just discussing it has to combine them together so job tracker is just simply assigning the next yet to run the reduced task to a requesting task tracker now regardless of the task trackers network location that is it's not exploiting it's simply it's implied effect on reduced shuffle time now we come to job scheduling in MapReduce so in MapReduce an application is represented by one or many jobs so a job consists of one or many map produced map and reduced tasks so th there could be a task that could involve many tasks it's one task that could involve many tasks while how do you map reduce comes with various choices of job schedulers one is first in first out scheduler schedule jobs in order of submission first come first serve basis like we are having in many of restaurants and like uh, over there like firstly first come first serve basis so if you come late you might have to wait for a certain amount of time to get a table and there's another fair scheduler which aims at giving every user a fair share of cluster capacity over time so 
what fear scheduler allows is every task get a fear share of cluster that every task that we are uh, scheduling on our computer or personal computer gets equal fair share of distribution of RAM random access memory it gets equal share like there are three brothers and of a father is, is having three sons who will inherit their property after after the father so so what the father does is he wants he doesn't want to do any discrimination over his brothers to spark up any more disputes so what he will do is he will give a part of land equally distribute them equally over three brothers so it aims at user every giving every user a fair share of cluster capacity over time that's the work of fair scheduler so in this lecture we discussed about job tracker task trackers and job scheduling so in the coming tutorial we'll be discussing about fault tolerance and how it's the main frame of Hadoop thank you guys hope you guys enjoyed this lecture happy learning